Yeah, how are you today? Good, how's your Good. Well, really, actually, fairly busy, but not work. Huh? Oh, busy. Busy doing work? Yeah, cleaning, cleaning the house, you know, the gardens and things. We spring cleaning, so yeah. I'm moving very gingerly. Yeah? Do you work every day? Um, no. Yeah. No. No. How often do you work? Oh. Three, four days a week. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've got other other interests as well right. that I'm involved in, so... Yeah. What, what, what are they? So, I support mainly mainly investment, property, oh, right. um, shares, things like that, you see. So right. which yeah, keeps me more than busy. Which yeah. keeps me more than more than busy. Prior to that, you see I was you know, well I was working eighty hours a week. Yeah. Eighty five, um, you know, we regard them as, you know, pretty pretty high high stress sort of uh, what, what area, so it's yeah. wonderful. What was that then? I was, I was acting medical director then at the office for more than three years. Oh, right, yeah. Until I found somebody. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't want the job. Right. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I was a deputy there and then I moved out to, to Caulfield. Um, so... Well, you were doing right, a bit about of that 12 years, yeah. And In about Caulfield? Three years, yeah. yeah, about 20 years. So yeah. you've been sort of basically doing like med administration, medical director yeah. stuff for a long Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I did um, clinical work at the Royal Melbourne, mm. but... Um, you know, you, you find in, in this sort of uh, area, and, and also at the children, um, and then at Western Hospital as well. But you find that, you know, after a while, you, you have to make a decision. You know, where, yeah. where you go, you know, you on the clinical side or the administrative side, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Although I enjoyed, you know, the, the clinical work, um, it, it, was, it was always going to be administration at sure. one stage. Now, very early, I thought that I'd go into the country and combine both, you know, part of me, part of clinical work. But that never turned out. And, hmm. um, Where did you train? Where did you train? Royal Melbourne. Right, yeah. Melbourne Uni. Melbourne Uni, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, you yeah, know, it's a good, good few years ago now. Yeah. <laughs> so, how, how did you get involved in doing this? Like being How did I get involved? Um, uh, well, I've always had uh, an interest in medical legal uh, mm. medicine, um, and um, you know, from an early stage when I got into the administration, and it was one thing that I did keep mm. when I was, um, you know, acting as medical director down at the Alpha. I did keep, a, you know, a, um, a close monitoring view on on that area. Uh, simply because I enjoyed it. Hmm. Um, and um, well, in this job, came well, along. Mm. So what sort of things, like um, what are doctors being investigated, like are they, how many of them is because of sort of a mental thing or something like that, or like do you have... Look, the, um, uh, you know, there are, there are really the, the three or so areas. The first is the registration, hmm. and, and registration areas, uh, um, such as also um, involvement in the overseas uh, doctors program. Um, the second is the complaints issues, and they can range from you know just minor things like right. complaints, so uh, somebody uh, complain. communication issues, uh, all the way through to so like sexual misconduct. Right. So then you come out and talk to the doctor and check it out. But you'd be, you'd uh, be not necessarily. Um, it depends on the you know it depends on the degree of the complaint. Hmm. Um, but we certainly require a written comment from the doctor, hmm. um, and then um, you know usually that, that that written comment then goes to the complainant, hmm. um, unless the doctor has you know real reasons why they don't wish it, hmm. um, uh, and um, uh, it's uh, the complaints are either uh, see that the act doesn't allow us to conciliate. We can't get the complainant and the doctor together and and to talk through the issues mm. and the, the problems. Um, so it is, is sort of kept, it has to be kept separate, but we try and uh, mix, because in the main they're communication issues. Mm. So, you know, there's that. And then there's the impaired doctor's program. For those doctors that, um, uh, you know, have, um, uh, have um, got drug like dependency, mm. uh, drug dependency issues. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, psychological, mm. uh, physical, mm. you know, these are, you know, such so as the intention okay. tremors, right. the tremors, <coughs> uh, the Parkinson's, mm. um, 
growing old and not being able to really, mm. you know, know that the time is up to, to give up mm. certain areas well, of clinical You practice. should know, well, who, who keeps an eye on, say, drug advertising by the... By the the advertising, the ad advertising is again is an area that the, uh, the board has been involved in, but uh, with the recent act, it, it does make it very difficult um, to uh, you know, come down strongly uh, in terms of um, uh, prosecution. Why is that? Well, it's a matter of reading the act and, and, and looking, but it's made a lot more open. Sorry. It's a more open slab. This is the so that, Yeah. Problem. Well, is it is it possible? How can I get a copy of that act? Because you see, my uh, really we're we're fighting a fa we're fighting yeah. a fairly common battle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though it seems like a bit of an antagonistic mm -hmm. situation that we're that we're in, um, my basic concern is about forced drug advertising and basically drug pushing by pharmaceutical companies. In a very well, the issue way. is that the pharmacy yeah. board. You should right. direct those issues specifically to the pharmacy. The pharmacy board. board. Who is yes. the pharmacy board, and what is it? Um, well, uh, uh, it would be a, a board that's established um, through a, an act of uh, state parliament. Right. But they should have a um, well. They will have a telephone number of the pharmacy board. Um, but of I'm Victoria. Uh -huh. This is. I'm talking about an Australia-wide problem. Uh, well, you know, they're the state. Um, I can't advise you in terms of, of Commonwealth. There possibly isn't one other than the, you know, the central federal um, uh, drug uh, agency, but they'd be able to advise you, no, you know, in, general, in general terms. The yeah. pharmacy board is responsible, yeah. obviously, just within this state mm. and within the, the, the uh, purposes of their act. Right. What, uh, what, about, what about if I have uh, information about actually criminal activity? How do I report that to the police? Well, because I've had problems with this. Yeah. Yeah, well, then it's it's a matter. Because you'd probably be like I'd, I'd imagine that if you're dealing with stuff like sexual misconduct and stuff, you would have had connected connections with the police. Wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. Um, um, but you know, certain groups, and not necessarily, hmm. not necessarily, hmm. um, because you know the. But you have personally, I mean. Yeah. Oh yes, I have general, hmm. you know, general contacts. Hmm. Um, but it, it depends for diff different areas. Um, look, those are issues that you need to take mm. up to the pharmacy board. Yeah, because they'd be able to advise you. But the board themselves mm. would be able to involve right, okay. police if there were, you know, activities. So right. one of the things, actually, this is something that I'll, I'll, I'll talk about today. Do you want to have a look at these? Yeah. And yeah, yeah let's so we'll, we'll get into that because I want to... Um, Tell you about, do you know about the toxic dump in Denver? No. Oh, no. Well, we have it. All these companies here mm. dump stuff just for the best thing. And uh, the, the residents here have been complaining about this for about eight years, or, or probably longer than that. Um, and when it has, um, when they complained about it, the EPA came out, and uh, all they did was take down the sign saying toxic dump. I don't think that's really adequate. Um, yeah. My patients have really been getting, they've been getting, I've had quite a few people who've developed respiratory problems, particularly asthma. In their 60s, 70s, quarantine respiratory physicians, big doses of steroids, just not getting better. Uh, I really am concerned about this because I know we've got Smith Klein Beach in here, we've got Ecolab, the chemical manufacturers, the Abbott Line, Sewerage Park, Gasworks, Daniel Hospital. Nobody's checking on this stuff. They burn stuff off in the early hours of the morning. Um, Mm. We've got terrible smells. I, had, I told you about my patient that died about a week and a half ago or two weeks ago. And I came out here and it was just incredibly smelly. Mm. And um, in the daytime you don't really smell it. Um, I am very concerned about my patients. I'm very concerned now that they've kind of realized uh, that they is. One of my patients actually told me, said, ah, I think my kids do the dump, the toxic dump. And then I had realized that this was a sewerage part. I had... Like and he's, he's, uh, he's about yeah. 63, um, yeah. um, and he yeah. was a smoker, was he? Yeah, he's a Dutch, he Dutch gentleman. He mm. stopped smoking when he was uh, 92, and he developed a lung cancer. And he actually had, uh, this is 94, developed a lung cancer, and uh, had radiotherapy, and it remitted, and he's not had it back. So he's, uh, he's a lucky man. Well, it sounds, uh, you know, as if he is. 
he also did yeah. get to the higher and you know, yeah. whatever. It was quite interesting though that he, um, he when he uh, got the lung cancer, he's one of the only patients that I've known who's just showed no fear whatsoever mm. about it. He spent the next um, three months um, painting a mural for the children on, on, on the village on his brother's van. Uh, they, there was a lot of positive psychological stuff that was going on at the, at the same time. He was actually doing things for other people with no, you know, no regard for his own kind of mortality mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and I, I, I see those things in terms of the psychological effect, looking at things like that there is a thing called human necrosing factor, which is a factor produced uh, by the brain. And uh, these things, there are physiological ways in which uh, you know, cancers do regress. I mean, if you look at things mm -hmm. like apoptosis and you look at the T-cell function, they are mopping things up. So looking at the psychological aspects of mental relaxation and creative activity and positive thinking, I mean, it's, uh, these are very important things, having a positive attitude towards other, other people. Um, and well, I have no doubt, you know, that that would be the case. Yeah. Uh, people like Ainsley Mears. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. And I mean, they were very rudimentary. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm not impressed really by that. There's so many in the world who's probably the same thing stuff that I've done because it's been looking at physiology, physiology, immunology aspects of it. Um, this is why I'm, I'm pretty outraged that I haven't been recognized in Victoria by the establishment. Um, that sure, they say, oh yeah, it's pretty clever. But shit, you know, it's, it's, it's world class science well, that really nobody else has done. It's a matter of, of the information um, being presented to people who know something about there aren't the areas that you Unfortunately, there aren't in Australia. Come through very difficult. Well, it's been, recognized, it's been recognized overseas and not in, not in Victoria. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I find the Victoria establishment, don't call me mad, rock me out. I mean, there's hardly, hardly a way to well, treat it. Well, it's really. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, I often say there's a, a, a fine dividing line between brilliance and uh, madness. Yeah, but I wasn't uh, mad, I was uh, brilliant. And I, I don't care whether you think there's a fine dividing line. It was, there was no, no madness, it was uh, brilliant. And if you, read, if you read the early work that I've done, Perfectly logical, perfectly rational. Just saying some things that the establishment didn't really want to hear. But you, you understand, you know, that that area which is quite clearly, you know, your interest, that that uh, will be pitched at far no. higher levels than you know I I would know or I'm prepared to be involved in. You see, so that's, that's I, the I, reason why I don't get involved in in it. Um, and and I, that's I, why yeah, I, I've I don't, toned down specifically. I don't, I don't, ac issues. I don't accept that one tiny bit. But having said that's that, fair enough. That's, that's fair enough. Well, well simply we, because we, my we, work, my work that I've done is all medicine. It is. Hmm. I am a medical scientist. Hmm. Um, my work, including all the stuff that I do here, you'll find the quality of my work is extremely good. Simply because I am very, I do know a hell of a lot about physiology and immunology and psychiatry. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important, you know, in a, in a good, sound practice of medicine that, that we, we do have or the clinicians do have you know, a clear understanding of those. Yeah, but the point is nobody in Australia does because it's taken out of the textbooks and I keep telling you that and you won't even you won't listen to me. I'm saying the pineal... I, I, I want to show you this book well, for the simple reason we're, that we're, we are, this is a book from the we're, library. We're, we're, in we are digressing. We are digressing. We are digressing. Well, okay, we'll I finish really this and then we'll digress. And then there's one other... Yeah, and we've got another okay, place right. to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Harry, he's... It feels that his back was forced, that he was soft yeah. at that time, it's actually causing his act by It's possible that he's actually getting a reaction to the, mm -hmm. to the carrier. Um, also found that he had a raised blood sugar on the last time. Mm -hmm. It's not, not very high, it was uh, 8.2. Mm -hmm. So doing, did a fasting sugar yes, um, the other day, uh, Monday. Um, and also, he's also on back of so It's quite possible that back of is putting his sugar up as well. Yeah. And there certainly is increased evidence that these, that these steroids do get absorbed in the system. Um, so his breathing has been much worse since he's been in the village as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, And I was wondering whether it might be the toxic dump related. Because uh, we, we, mm -hmm. he says that his grass grows much faster than his brother's. Right? He's close to the end near the sewerage plant. I have a good suspicion that the sewerage is actually coming through that end of the village, so that end is not drained properly, so it, it, it actually does steady flood. So all that stuff is going to be flooding, flooding through, and anyway, we, we uh, just took the blood test off. And the other thing is that he brought up the, the question of eugenics, and because he, he's been, in, was involved, uh, left uh, after World War II. Quite interesting, a lot of people have, are watching this stuff on television, there's a big move to desensitize 
to work into eugenics. I don't know how you feel about eugenics. Um, in in what what um, what aspect? In what as aspect? In the only aspect that there is, the psychiatric and psychological theory of racial superiority. And uh, I, I think there's been no no doubt that the important thing is that there is pictorial evidence and that there is direct evidence from people that have suffered persecution. Uh, that you can't desensitise that. But you can, uh, as the Japanese, uh, you know, with their textbooks, um, and uh, the atrocities that they committed. And there is no doubt that the Allies have committed atrocities too. Mm. War is a dreadful thing. It is indeed. And, you know, um, unfortunately, uh, yeah, when you get into a war situation, it's a matter of, um, regrettably, the ends justifying the means. Yeah. Final analysis. Well, but, um, uh, you know, I mean that's 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 a whole whole different uh, area. As, as you as you said, quite clearly there's, there's been and there will always be in in war, and in, and we can also argue in life. You know, in in peace. I'm, I'm saying not. I'm saying that there's um, a eugenics policy in practice in Australia. Um, <coughs> what in terms of you know in peace time? Or right now, in 1997, and this is what I'm trying to draw your attention mm -hmm. to. They're dropping the pioneer information out of the textbook and having all these Aboriginal people having special immunization programs for them with the information that is available that AIDS may well have been introduced into the population and that there's a big heterosexual 17 to 25 year old AIDS epidemic in New Guinea at the moment. And it's a heterosexual disease in Africa. And, yeah, in the, the and in the gay, popula yeah. in the gay yeah. population and then IV drug users. Now these yeah. are the traditional targets of eugenics. Mm -hmm. And it's the American Psychiatric Association that decides who's mad with the DSM-4. And this is what I've been trying to explain. That Australia may be following the American style of psychiatric medicine, but what they're doing is following the American style of eugenics. This is the 1990s. There's a race war going on in America. There's a race war going on in Australia. And I have been trying to point this out. I'm a very moderate doctor, but I don't like racism. Mm -hmm. And I don't like... Um, well, I don't think any, anybody likes racism. Well, I, I think, think that people, lots ought, of be, to people ought to be judged on who they are and what, what they stand for. But then, you know, uh, they're the important thing. Well, I, I believe I, that, that one group has an advantage over another, or should have an advantage yeah. over another. But I think that the only advantage should be through hard work and, and diligence. Yeah, but I did hard work and diligence, and I suffered extreme racism mm -hmm. in Victoria from the establishment. I still am. Well, I think that, you know, the, the point is that we, we obviously, we're still not a multicultural society. Yeah, but what I've, when I've been trying mm -hmm. to point it out, all that's happened is that they've come down jumping on me more and more. And lock me up and be rid of me. I don't you know. They're not. Well, yeah. well their, their issue is that I can't argue yeah, well, about that because I, I don't I don't know. You see, I don't know what the background of any of it was. And and well, I'd like to as, look as you said, I'd like I'm, to look I'm, not, I'm not Ramesh. Um, and, and that's why I'm saying that I don't want to be. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm hearing your side, which sounds perfectly valid. But if I sat down and spoke to you know, the, the, um, the psychiatrist or whatever, but I want to do their, their issue may be, you know, firmly valid. Fair I have enough. no idea. I well, have I've, no I've idea. I've got all my and notes of freedom of information. As, as I say. But I can show them I'm, to you if you want. Well, I'm not I can not show you interested. The, I can show you I'm the psychiatrist side. I'm not interested. Mm. Not in my... If well, not I, what, in my are you area. interested that AIDS may be being introduced into the community by my father in Queensland, who's actually working for the Queensland government? Well... Um, but that my father has actually been involved. He, he trained in tropical medicine and propaganda in in uh, in Cambridge, and he was doing experimentation of this human population in Sri Lanka. And now he's going from the Queensland government and the MA up to New Guinea, to Cook Islands, to uh, um, Fiji, to Indonesia, setting up clinics promoting American-style psychiatry and immunization. Now. The fact is, I know that my father is an extremely corrupt man, and actually got me locked up because I was trying, because he was worried about me knowing all of stuff about this. This is very, very serious. This is a problem. Now, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that if the establishment won't listen to these complaints, what am I supposed to do apart from going to the media about it? Well, look, there are issues that you need to... I am. Uh, well, look, I mean, I'm, I'm just... Part. 
Now, if I am going to take it up, I'll try to take it up with the medical board, and the medical board failed to take any notice of it wow. anyway. Dina Kirsten, we're going to, this lady is another, yeah. she's a German lady, she's mm. actually a Dutch lady who's living in Germany, she was born in Germany, but lived yeah, in and she's Holland. Uh, she's heavily, heavily too. Yeah, 72. Yeah. Uh, this lady has suddenly, for some extraordinary reason, in the last nine months, or eight months, developed pulmonary, progressive pulmonary fibrosis. Showed up in the chest x ray started getting short of breath, started giving a cough. This happened shortly after her husband committed suicide. However, it also happened shortly after a pneuma back. Now, I don't know, and it's also happened while she's living here. Now, I don't know whether it's related to toxins, whether it's related to a pneuma back, or, of course, some people, she's pretty late to be getting something like SLA, um, mm. uh, it's on the immune thing. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. Which is the other obvious one. I've sent her to, she's not on any drugs that really would have caused it. She's also getting renal phenomena, which she's had for a while. And uh, the Dr. Patty had stuck an aurora just after her husband died, because he did that with virtually everybody who was bad about mm. anything. Mm. Uh, but I don't think that's really responsible for it. I think it's possibly the pneuma back, and uh, mm. because you can get a, um, anything where you're getting triggering an immune reaction, you can get a, re a reaction of fibrosis or, or hyperimmune reaction. Now, this is one of the things that I'm concerned is being overlooked by the immunization program. If you look at SIDS, if you look at the statistics in America, 10,000 kids died of SIDS. Um, 4,000 4, of them died within four days of an immunization. That seems a hell of a lot. Uh, there's also no doubt about electromagnetic fields, um, particularly having kids next to just lying next to each other, which isn't necessary. It suppresses uh, melatonin levels, and melatonin and serotonin levels then affect your breathing. Um, these things, again, are not being looked at. Uh, they're not being looked at in Australia. They will be looked at unless scientists like me, who are doing work in this area, start being respected and start being taken seriously. Just because we're outside the academic system and doing work independently, not sitting there getting big government grants and, and publishing, we're, we're doing some amazing work. And it's not just me, I've got other friends who are, who are also doing a lot of very good research outside the establishment. Um, the establishment are stuck in there, in there chopping up animals and drugging them with this, that, and the other, and broken noodles into them. But they don't think about stuff. They don't look in a cross-disciplinary way at information. Now, I really am trying to offer my work to the medical board, the medical community in Victoria. If really all they're interested in doing is just keeping an eye on me and trying to keep the scandal quiet, it's just no, there's no, uh, quite clearly, that's, that's a wrong assumption. The board is, um, there, there are conditions placed on, on your registration. Yeah, but the whole thing was that you know in the first place. Okay, well, there were five, like, okay, well, why doesn't the board release the tapes to me of the hearing? Well, I, I have no, no idea, uh, you know, with respect to it. Uh, but I'd like, I'd like, like you to read. Um, it's a bit late. Oh. Mm -hmm.